Hello, everybody. Adam Parks here with another episode of Receivables Roundtable. Today, I'm here with my recurring guest, Mr. Matt Maloney from FFAM. Uh, Matt and I have been working together since pretty much the beginning of my time in this industry. Uh, Matt, for those that might not be familiar with you, which I'm sure are few and far between, but can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you got to the seat that you're in today? Yeah. Um, so again, Matthew Maloney, President, Chief Investment Officer of the FAM 360 Alliance of Companies. Um, uh, the FAM 360 Alliance of Companies really is a integrated group of companies providing receivables management, and revenue cycle management across different vertical uh, industry sectors. So predominantly we're in uh, financial services, insurance subrogation, and healthcare. Um, we do touch on some retail and, and some other miscellaneous uh, commercial and consumer sectors, but that's the predominant uh, part of our business. Um, started this company with uh, family members back in 2002, February 2002, actually. We're coming up on our 20-year anniversary. In fact, we're planning something pretty big for our 20-year anniversary. Uh, I won't talk about it because it's kind of a surprise okay. for the employees different people. But uh, next year in February, coming up on our 20 year anniversary, it's hard to believe. Um, and, uh, you know, started it with my father, uh, my uncle, uh, my mother was in the business, uh, came into the business early on. And we kind of grew the business. Um, 2014, my uncle, we, we structured a deal to buy uh, him out of the business and then, um, you know, continue to grow it ever since. So it's been a uh, it's been one one heck of a ride. We've seen a lot of ups and downs and everything else, but uh, I think that's what's kind of built our character in the organization. Well, I know FFAM is always a first mover, um, and you guys are always on the cutting edge of what's happening from a technology standpoint. You're always kind of looking forward towards what's the next big thing coming down versus just trying to react to things after they happen, which kind of brings me to the conversation today, which is about culture. Um, and I think that you guys have a really unique and interesting culture, as we can tell from the backdrop behind you here. Um, but, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> which I really like, by the way. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I think as we talk about corporate culture and, and, you know, I know in the last video, we talked a little bit about how you guys were able to pivot because of your culture during the COVID crisis and what that led to. Um, and I'll leave a link to that video below for anybody that hasn't seen that one yet. But let me start yeah. with the general question of, in your mind, what is culture? Yeah, I mean, you know, you can define it different ways. I think by definition, uh, you know, culture is this integrated pattern of human knowledge, belief, and behavior within a, a group of people, whether it's a, a small group of people or an ecosystem, a city, a business, a family. To me, it's, you know, culture is both kind of the tangible things that you can touch and feel and the intangible element that we uh, we have in our lives. It's how we set expectations uh, for how we behave, uh, again, whether that's in our family or whether in our business, um, you know, in society. So um, the attitudes, the moral values, the business uh, acumen, all of that is wrapped up into it. And again, it's both for me, it's both tangible and uh, which I'll talk a little bit about today and intangible. Okay. So, you know, building a corporate culture is always a difficult thing, especially for startups as we're, you know, kind of building our businesses and looking at constantly being problem solvers versus kind of getting out in front of things and determining what we want our culture to be and how we're going to get there, which I think is something that you guys have done incredibly well, especially over the past couple of years, past five years or so. So, yeah. you know, how is a culture, you know, from a corporate perspective developed and, and how did you get it to come together? Yeah, so I think with anything, uh, culture included, it comes with and starts with a vision. Um, and so what is the vision, even with our own personal lives, what is the vision that we have for our life, right? It starts there. And then you have to start to lay the foundations and the, and the pieces of the puzzle together, um, you know, to, to ultimately develop that culture. And so uh, for me, um, and we'll talk about this perhaps a little bit later uh, in the session here. Um, it kind of started there and it was like, okay, what do I want the identity of my organization to look like? Not just from the outside world, not just from people when they look at us and branding and all that stuff, but really what do I want the fabric, the foundation of the business to look like with our people? And um, as I started 
I mean, years ago, uh, really, this is going back, you know, well over a, a decade, um, but started researching some of this and some of the organizations that might be highly regarded for having outstanding cultures. Um, it became evident to me that there was there were a lot of pieces to that pie to make it work. And I knew that if I was going to do this and I was going to really influence our people um, with the cultural values that I had a vision for, um, I was going to have to really, really invest some time and money to do so. And um, it doesn't happen overnight, right? It happens over the course of a long period of time. And eventually that culture and all the people within the organization that make up the organization, they become, you know, they personify the culture, but it does take, <laughs> it, took, it takes time. That's for sure. So clearly you guys have, have made a specific determination to make an investment into the culture. You determined what culture you wanted to create and then you went after it, but there's always got to be a prompt to those things, right? Because so many organizations just kind of go through the process, you know, from your perspective, you know, what was that aha moment for you that made you say, all right, it's time for me to control culture. Yeah. So it didn't even relate to our business. It had no relation. It rarely to our does. Yeah. It had no relation to our business. Um, and I really, in thinking back at this, um, on this, um, I've been married or will be married for 16 years on June, June 25th of this month. And um, a couple of years into our marriage, we had uh, our first child. And then a couple of years later, we had our second child. And then about five years later, we had our third child. And um, with the birth, I know this may sound odd, but you know, with the birth of our first child, I distinctly remember thinking about, you know, wow, I'm about to be a father. Um, I'm about to have this huge responsibility of this life. And I also am about to have this huge responsibility to set the tone and tenor of the quote unquote culture of what my family, not my parents' family, but my family is going to be with my wife and I, and now this first child mm -hmm. and then the second child. Um, and so it started there. And um, so back in my oldest child just turned 14 uh, last week, actually. So about 14 years ago, I started thinking about it and started wondering, okay, well, if I'm gonna connect all the pieces of my life together, both within my family, thinking about what is the culture of my own family gonna look like? How am I gonna raise my children? What do I want my children to be? Um, that started transcending slowly over a course of a couple of years into my business. Like, wait a minute, these are all interconnected, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a family business we own this business. I have my family, my, my blood family and my, my wife and my kids. And so that's really what started it. And I, and so I started having these aha moments and so they were drips, you know, it wasn't like a tied away, but they were drips of things. And, um, I distinctly remember, and I don't remember the, the year exactly, but I distinctly remember my first attempt at saying, Hey, I really want to start impacting all of our people in our company and start defining what that culture is. And the first thing we did, um, and it was somewhat elementary, but it was the first thing that we did and first thing that I did and came up with was to start putting together these team building events mm -hmm. with our people, right? Beyond just, hey, we do occasional luncheons, we do occasional you know, things for our employees, but beyond that, things that we could get together with uh, purpose and forethought outside the organization and do these team building events. And that's how it started, it started there. Um, but the aha moment was with the birth of my three children, um, you know, over the course of that period, I, initially with my first child, who I said was 14 years old now. And so um, over the course in the span of that, you know, three to five year period there, um, slowly but surely, as I was continuing my attempt, sometimes successful, sometimes failed attempt to develop, uh, you know, culture in my own home with my family, I was doing the same thing in our business family. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's how it started kind of coming together. And, um, and slowly but surely, you learn things that, that work. You learn things that speak to people. Um, as the organization grows, it's very difficult um, if you don't have buy-in and consistency from you know, your management all the way to your frontline employee, if they don't see and feel and understand what the culture of the organization is, um, then culture is just something that's in our mindset, right? They're not, they're not living it out. And let's face it, you know, people work 
to feed their families, to, um, to, to, you know, for, for their own benefit long-term. And so I looked at it and say, how can I bring a greater sense of organizational oneness, organizational togetherness by building a culture um, that everybody can buy into. And that was, you know, it started with my family and cause that was my objective with my kids and my wife and then transcended into the business. So, you know, FFAM has a, a unique culture and, and like you talked about the team building events and, you know, I've been fortunate to do a lot of different kinds of work with you guys and, and had a chance to experience a lot of it. But, you know, for those that haven't, like, what is the culture at FFAM? Like, what is, what are some of these driving factors and, and kind of what are some of the exercises that you've undertaken to build that culture? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, as part of our core values, which uh, anyone can see on our, on our uh, website, if they went to our website and we train our people, it's one of the first things that all new hires in the entire organization, whether they're hired, you know, um, as a collection representative or they're hired as uh, someone in IT or whatnot, they go through some cultural training, cultural mm-hmm. development training. Um, but one of our core values um, is the golden rule, do unto others as you would want done to yourself. And it kind of starts there. Like it embodies everything. That was kind of the central hub of everything that I wanted to do within our business. Okay. Like do unto others, treat others, engage with others, work hard for others as you would want for them, support others. Um, and so we talk and train um, a couple of times a year uh, about this, um, of how what we do or what we don't do Um, how we engage with people or fail to engage with people impacts our neighbor, impacts the person sitting next to us, impacts the person sitting in the other department, uh, maybe sitting here in Atlanta or sitting in our Phoenix office or sitting in our California office. And so it really starts there. And I just felt like that that was, um, I felt like for our organization, um, that one kind of golden rule do unto others as you want done to 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 our as you want done to you was something that w- could could permeate throughout the entire you know business and so for the, for the organization um today when you look at it today and I'll talk about some things we just recently implemented in fact I just signed a contract with a third party firm who's coming in and we're now applying technology around all of our cultural values and how we're touch all the touch points really pretty excited about this follow up on that matt i'm gonna have to learn more (laughs) yeah it's really really cool i'm I'm super pumped about it um and i'll tell you why i did it real quick i i did we're implementing this technology so that we can have touch points and so that we can have feedback loops Mm -hmm. for all of our people because Frankly, I don't get the, the, the benefit of always getting to talk to every person in the organization. Um, you know, when you have a few hundred people in an organization, uh, my day-to-day schedule allows me to talk to a handful of people that I'm working with. And absent of me doing, and us doing team building events and exercises and, web, and, 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 you know, this last year, there were more webinars than they were in person because of the COVID pandemic. Sure. Um, I just wasn't able to get kind of feedback and touch point from, you know, the frontline team member of ours. Mm-hmm. And so we wanted to implement this technology um, and this software to do this. And, and we've hired this company to come in and run all this. It's, it's really cool. But it was primarily because I was like, gosh, I may think that our vision is well casted. I may think that our culture is, heading in the right direction, right? It's never where you want it to be. It's always, we're always trying to push and, and strive for the next thing. But maybe I'm drinking my own Kool-Aid. Maybe those people, you know, don't think the way that I think. I want to know that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people think uh, ignorance is bliss, but in this case, I don't think that's the case. Ignorance is not bliss. And I want to know, even if it's something that's painful for me to realize saying, oh man, we've missed the mark there. But if we can't get in front of problems, if you don't know what they are. Exactly. Exactly. That's completely accurate. So, um, so, uh, you know, so from things such as, you know, the team building events that we do to uh, training seminars and sessions, we have one coming up on June 22nd. Um, we're, we're bringing to get this one's just with management of the organization. So we're bringing about 45 to 50 people together all 
frontline management and all other levels of management throughout the organization. We're doing a, a, a three and a half hour uh, cultural development vision casting meeting, which I'm super pumped about. We're actually going to be videoing uh, a part of it, um, you know, and, and, but we'll be talking about in that meeting, I'll be basically unveiling the new software platform that we're using to track all of this stuff. So I'm pretty, pretty pumped about that. But so again, team building events, um, uh, these, these tra our training seminars uh, just recently, we went through and you can see the wall that's sitting behind me. Um, this is just one of uh, kind of the methods uh, to, to my madness and to our madness of uh, things that I wanted to do. So throughout the entire organization, all offices, we've done this kind of uh, uh, refresh of these motivational, um, motivational splash walls or motivational splash messages or quotes from different people. Uh, and I like, uh, you know, Peter Drucker's quote, which is, you know, uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Right. <laughs> um, I love, I love that quote by Peter Drucker and it's so true in the organization. I mean, don't get me wrong. Part of our culture is a culture of high personal accountability and execution. Cause if you don't have personal accountability, you don't have execution, you're not going to be in business very long, right? And so that's part of our culture. I think a lot, I think a lot of people today, and, and this is, you know, this is again, we've got these kinds of things, different ones. This is our teamwork wall. I'm sitting in one of our conference rooms. I'm sitting in our what we call our Washington conference room. Um, but we've got these types of messages throughout all of our office spaces. Um, again, also quotes, different things like that. And so um for, for the organization, I wanted to have these kind of motivational splash walls for the people to be constant little drip reminders about who we are, what we're trying to do. This is teamwork, right? Or these are things that we're trying to accomplish. And, and so those types of things, you never, you never know how it's going to impact someone who might be having a crappy day, a day that, you know, and they, they just need something. And maybe, maybe just, maybe they just see one word in one of our crazy collages or something like that. That's that kind of like, you know what? Yeah. You know what? I am going to be better. Or I'm going to have fun today. Or this is good teamwork. Or you know what? I can collaborate. And I forgot, you know what? Let me pick up the phone and call Matt because our culture, we have this open door policy. Anybody can reach out to me or anyone else if they have ideas, things that they want to, they want to do. But again, there's a, as I said earlier in the, in the conversation, there's a lot of pieces to the pie Mm -hmm. And developing the culture, um, you know, isn't just the fun stuff you do. Is it? It isn't just a fringe benefit. It's also a mindset and an attitude. And I just mentioned a moment ago about a mindset of high personal accountability, mm -hmm. uh, a mindset of high execution, which kind of goes to, you know, our um, uh, kind of motto as an organization is, is above and beyond, right? Mm -hmm. Everything that we're doing in the organization and part of this culture of the golden rule, doing to others what you want done to yourself is to go above and beyond in everything we do with our teammates, with our clients, with each other. And I'm hoping that maybe it rubs off in their personal life too. So. And there's nothing wrong with that, Matt. It sounds like you guys are on the right path. And, you know, I think once you have kind of unveiled this technology and kind of gone through this process that we're going to have to do a follow-up discussion because I feel like, you know, the last couple, the, the last conversation that we had in this conversation really has revolved around culture, which is really what you guys are building your business on. Um, yeah. Yes, you provide financial services. Yes, you provide call center services, but that's not the foundation of your business, which I think is really interesting in the approach that you guys have taken. Um, yeah. In, in the short term, though, you know, I really want to thank you for taking the time to kind of chat with me today, show everybody a little bit about what makes FFAM different and, and how you guys have been building culture, because I think this is something that everybody's struggling with a little bit right now, especially with remote employees. And do I bring them back? And you know, what's going to happen yeah. next. And, you know, culture has changed over the last 18 months and, and it's changed in a dramatic way. Um, yeah. and how are we staying in front of those things? And, you know, especially where your organization has offices in so many different locations and, you know, all of that, trying to bring everybody together, um, you know, always has some unique challenges. And I think that you guys are facing them in a very creative way, which I've enjoyed watching from the sidelines. 
Yeah. Um, you know, anything else that you'd like to kind of share with everybody today before we wrap up? Yeah, um, I think two things. One, as, as all organizations, and we all think about this, um, you know, think about, well, what can we do to, you know, make our workplace environment better, our workplace culture? Um, just start somewhere, you know, just start somewhere. The truth is, everyone actually already has a workplace culture. You may not know it. If you don't know it, it may be a bad thing, right? That may, may be because your workplace culture isn't that uh, isn't defined. And I think that um, my encouragement to to anybody is, you know, just like I started, I just said, you know what? I, I just this is my vision. This is kind of what I want. I knew I couldn't do it by myself, so I needed over the years. I started doing little things and then bringing in people to help me. Um, and now we've gotten to where we've gotten to. But I think in in today's day and age. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as we, as a, as a, as a world, but as a country come out of the, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic, and we're trying to figure out and navigate how we reintegrate our workforces back into an office. If you went remote, mm-hmm. uh, like we did, or we're trying to figure out what are some additional things that we can do to draw our people closer to the organization. Um, I mean, if it's not on your strategy board, you need to add the word, you know, workplace culture, because that's something that that's going to be super important. Um, you know, as we, as we move ahead over the next uh, several years. So. Well, greatly appreciated, Matt. Again, I, I want to thank you for taking the time to chat with me again today. I learned a little something. I'm literally sitting here thinking about my workplace culture with my remote staff and foreign staff and everything else. So um, you definitely yeah. got my wheels spinning. Um, for those of you that are watching, you know, feel free to leave questions or comments below. Both Matt and I will be happy to respond to you and provide any additional insights based on your questions. If you have any other topics that you'd like to see me cover or people that you'd like to see me interview, please feel free to leave a comment below. We're always looking for new topics to cover that are relevant to the receivables management industry. But until next time, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks again, Matt. Thanks, guys. Thank you.